In today's video, I'm going to take a look at something that regularly comes up and I have to deal with and give advice on. And that is the whole question of taxation and employment law settlements and awards. Now, an employment law settlement could be a situation, for example, of redundancy. And even though the statutory redundancy entitlement of any employee is not taxable, is tax free, any ex gratia payment. Uh, will be taxable. So that's one situation where the question of taxation arises in relation to the employee leaving the job. It may also arise that an employee will bring a number of claims against the employer to, for example, the WRC. And some of the claims may be to do with payment of wages, some may be to do with working time, not getting rest breaks, some could be to do with discrimination and some could be to do with, for example, unfair dismissal or constructive dismissal. The case then before it goes ahead may well settle. In other words, the employer may decide to try to settle the case rather than having a hearing and run, running the risk of losing. <coughs> Excuse me. And that gives rise then to the question of taxation. What is the situation in relation to the award? If the award was 20 or 30 grand, if it's broken down into different categories, there is obviously a potential tax liability and the award or the settlement agreement rather from the employer will always look to um, request an indemnity from the employee in respect of taxation. But the employee would want to be very careful and really get advice about taxation and the taxation implications of any award or any settlement. So let's take a look then. Firstly, I say that this is a complex area and if you are the recipient of a settlement or a settlement offer or a settlement agreement and you need to get advice on it and you'd be well advised to get legal advice on it, you would also be well advised to get taxation advice and taxation advice from a tax consultant. Uh, now there's a, an Irish tax institute and if the person who's advising you is a member of that institute, uh, it's probably a good sign and your normal accountant, your accountant who may do bookkeeping or uh, help with small businesses and so on, may not just have the required expertise in this area. So you need to just check that. Generally, there are payments which are exempt from income tax in terms of a settlement. So payments for claims that are made under a relevant act on foot of a decision or recommendation of a relevant authority they're exempt from income tax. So if the payment uh, or the claim made by you is under a relevant act and the WRC or some other relevant authority, for example, a court uh, or the injuries board or somebody awards you a certain amount of money, well then these payments are exempt from income tax. But that gives rise to the question, what's a relevant act and what's a relevant authority? We'll have a look at that in the next slide. In addition to this, payments exempt from income tax would be subject to certain conditions out of court settlements, payments arising or claims arising under a relevant act. Again, this is a situation where the claim doesn't actually go ahead, there's no hearing, but there is a settlement. And this is what I was talking to you about at the beginning of this video. So what are relevant authorities and what are relevant acts? Well, a relevant act <coughs> would be an act containing a provision for the protection of employees' rights or entitlements. So it would include Employment Equality Act, the Maternity Protection Act, Payment of Wages Act, Parental Leave, Terms of Employment, minimum, minimum Notice, and so on. These acts are acts that provide employees uh, rights or entitlements. And so any award by a relevant authority under one of these acts is probably exempt from income tax. But this would be, you'll see there, for example, that, um, well, I won't make that point just now, a relevant act and continue are these other acts, as you can see here, which are considered to be a give rise to payments which are exempt from um, income tax. A relevant authority then would be the Workplace Relations Commission, the Labour Court or the Civil Court. Payments, however, that are not exempt from income tax. Payments in respect of remuneration or arrears of remuneration. For example, if you were entitled to holiday pay or if you didn't get paid whatever your entitlement was in respect of public holidays or holiday pay, and you bring a claim. If that claim goes ahead, then any payment in respect of that successful claim 
any outcome will actually be in respect of uh, pay. So that is taxable. There's going to be income tax payable on that. Likewise, if the case settles and the employer comes to you and says, look, I'm going to pay you your holiday pay, I'll pay your public holiday pay, etc. We don't need to have this hearing. That's fine. That's a settlement. But again, that payment to you is going to be in respect of pay that you didn't get. And therefore, it is liable to income tax. Determination of employment, then number two. If, for example, a successful claim for unfair dismissal. If you bring a claim for unfair dismissal, you're going to be awarded, if you're successful, compensation for your financial loss. So essentially, if you're out of work, for example, for three months, you, you may win three months salary. However, if you win three months salary, that really represents pay that you would have got if you were still in the job. Therefore, that's income. Therefore, it's taxable. Again, number three then, a payment that is not exempt from income tax, compensation for a reduction in income or future reduction in income due to restructure or reorganization or change in work methods. In other words, if your employer changes your location or reorganizes things or changes work methods and gives you compensation then in respect of that reduction in future income, that compensation is really to compensate you for your loss of income. Again, it's an income payment, therefore it's liable to tax, liable to income tax. Settlements then, you may bring a claim to court, or you may bring a claim to WRC or Labour Court. It may settle, it may not go ahead at the hearing, and it may be uh, exempt if the settlement is in writing, if the agreement is not between connected persons, if the a claim would have been a bona fide claim under a relevant act, if it was made to a relevant authority. It may be exempt if the claim was likely to be successful if put in front of the relevant authority. And the settlement may be exempt if the, the amount does not exceed the amount, maximum amount that could have been awarded if it was decided by a relevant authority. So if the relevant authority can only give you, for example, for unfair dismissal, up to two years' salary, then any settlement that would exceed two years' salary clearly is not going to be exempt from a payment. So you need to check the relevant uh, or the Revenue Commissioner's website just to see exactly the circumstances under which settlements uh, are or exempt from income tax. But again, I would emphasize and reiterate, you do need to get tax advice. Termination payments then, these would be situations where perhaps you've been made redundant or you're leaving the job. Statutory redundancy is exempt from income tax. Ex gratia payments, however, are taxable. Ex gratia payments are discretionary payments. These are payments that are over and above your statutory entitlement. These are taxable. So if your employer is giving you, for example, four weeks pay for every year of service, two weeks would be your statutory entitlement, and that's tax-free. However, the other two weeks, the ex gratia or discretionary payment, that's taxable. Now, there is a basic exemption of 10,160 plus 765 euros for each complete year of service. And that increased, or that basic exemption can be increased by 10,000 if uh, the individual has not received a tax free termination payment within the previous 10 years. Then there's another situation that arises called a standard capital superannuation benefit. That's something that, again, you need to see your tax advisor. The lifetime limit of a tax-free termination payment, though, is 200,000. So if you're lucky enough to get a good payment and then, you know, five, ten years later, you may be looking at another one, uh, then you need to be aware that the lifetime limit is 200 grand. As I say, this is a complex area. I would recommend, as well as getting legal advice in relation to any settlement or any exit from your employment, uh, and you're going to be asked to sign an exit package or an exit settlement agreement. You're going to be asked to give up or waive your rights to bring any claims against the employer arising from the employment. You're going to be asked perhaps for an indemnity in respect of taxation for the employer. Then, you know, as well as getting legal advice, get tax advice. Hope you find this video useful. You might contact details are there on the screen. If you do, give it the thumbs up down below and you might share it with any friends or anybody that you know, colleagues perhaps, who this may be of interest to. Thank you.